In this video, we're going to show you everything you need to know in order to set up and connect the Shure SM7B dynamic microphone with the Rode Rodecaster Pro audio mixer. I think this is a lot of people's end game setup. The SM7B is probably the most popular podcast microphone in the world, and the Rode Rodecaster Pro 2 is an awesome audio mixer that I think serves the purpose for a lot of people at the highest level. And I think this is a pretty deadly combo for a lot of people to have as their end game dream setup for their podcast studio or live stream studio. In this video, we're going to show you everything that you need to know about how to set this up and connect it to your Rodecaster Pro 2 properly with the best settings. We're going to show you what equipment you need, what equipment you don't need. And of course, you're going to be able to hear the microphone with all the different presets that are built into the Rodecaster Pro 2. And we're going to show you how both windscreens work and sound with this setup as well. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have links down in the description below where you can find current up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Now, as you can see right now, I am just holding the Shure SM7B. You're listening to the Rode NT1. You can see a logo up in the top corner of the NT1. Once we set up and connect this microphone, that logo will change to a Shure SM7B, and you'll be able to hear this setup as well as we go through all the different settings. Now, not only are we, we going to show you what you need, but I want to talk about what you no longer need with this setup. You no longer need a cloud lifter or inline preamp. The Rodecaster Pro 2 has more than enough clean gain to properly power the Shure SM7B on its own. That's a huge deal. Before you used to need to buy the Rodecaster 1, and then four of these, and four Shure SM7Bs. So right there, the cost of the inline preamps more than makes up for the additional cost of the Rodecaster Pro 2. And that's why we recommend this so much, because you don't need all this outboard gear anymore. It's just plug and play with the hardest to power microphone, the Shure SM7B. So when you buy the Shure SM7B, it comes in the box like this with this windscreen. You do get an optional windscreen. We're going to show you how that sounds at the end. First of all, in order to mount this, because this microphone is loose, you're going to need some type of stand. Now, for me, it really comes down to two options. The first is an old fashioned table stand. I use these for years and I'm super, super happy with them every time I use them. They're inexpensive, they break down, they pack flat, so they're extremely portable if you need to go on the go, if you're meeting somebody somewhere to do a recording. It's a really, really good option. They're inexpensive and they're built super tough. The downside of them is that they don't offer a lot of sound isolation. Every tap comes through the table, through the sand, into the microphone, which can be distracting for your recording. The other disadvantage of them is that they sit on the table. If I'm in a situation like this with a mixer in front of me or a laptop in front of me, there's just no room for that on the table beside me and it's fighting for the same real estate. So for that reason, we often recommend the Rode PSA 1, the 1 Plus here. You can see that I put tape over it, put my own logo on it. This is what it looks like when it's out of the box. Now, I'm going to mount this microphone to this stand so you can see how it works. You don't need any extra equipment with the Rode PSA 1 Plus. The old one, you needed an extra adapter arm to make it work, but this one, you no longer need this. Now, the reason that we recommend this stand is because with the neoprene, inside the neoprene, there's extra sound dampening as well, which take all the, you know, clicks and clacks out of the recording. But this microphone stand is the easiest to use. If you like it low, it sits there. If you like it in the medium position, it sits there. If you want to hang it high and have it like that, it sits there. Back, forward. There's no tension knobs that you have to tighten. There's no tools, nothing that you need in order to make this work. And every other stand that I use, I find it super distracting when I'm cranking it down mid podcast or something like that to get it where I need it to be. The Shure SM7B is a heavy microphone and the Rode PSA One Plus holds it perfectly where I want it every time. Next, we need some type of XLR cable in order to connect this microphone to the Rodecaster Pro 2. So here I have a Canary Star Quad XLR cable. I like these ones for a lot of reasons. They have male, female connector, which is what you need from any XLR cable to make this work. They have black connectors, which look nicer on camera. You can get them in a variety of colors like this. They're just as high quality as the Mogami Studio Gold, in my opinion, and they're more flexible. You get more color options. It's really nice. You can see in a video like this one, 
it's easy to follow the red cable to the back of the Rodecaster Pro and the white cable to the back, and you can tell which microphone's plugged in where. You can have it company colors or branded or whatever you want. You can get them in black too. I just like these cables for a lot of those reasons. Next, we're gonna connect the other end of this cable to the back of the Rodecaster Pro. We're gonna use the first input here. So you can see on the back of the Rodecaster Pro here, I have microphone one, which is the Shure SM7B in the first slot, and the red cable here is the Rode NT1 that you've been listening to so far. Now, before I set this up in the Rodecaster Pro, Nothing on the Rodecaster Pro will sound good if we have bad mic placement. You want the Shure SM7B about three or four fingers away from your mouth, pointed at your mouth. If you're too close, it's going to be really poppy and boomy. If you're too far away, you're going to have to turn the volume up so high on your Rodecaster Pro 2 that it's going to make the Shure SM7B sound really edgy and sensitive and you're going to hear all the background noise. So this is really where it's designed to be within a fist of your mouth pointed right at your mouth. I like having it just off axis like this so then you can still see my face on camera. I don't like having the microphone right in front of my mouth. Okay, let's take a look at the settings inside the Rodecaster Pro 2. So by default, this will be set to dynamic. Now it's really cool, the Rodecaster Pro 2 built a preset for the SM7B. So we're gonna go to that and click that. Now you can see right away that the level jumped up from 45 to 55 dB. They know that this microphone needs a lot of gain. As I'm speaking here, you can tell that I'm kind of in the bottom half of this other green bar here. That's exactly where I wanna be. When I get my loudest, I wanna be right in the middle of that green bar, which I kinda of call the sweet spot. And when I talk naturally, I like to be bottomed out right at the very beginning of that green bar. I find that that gives me the best result and I don't risk peaking or clipping. If you turn it up too much, you'll notice that it peaks and clips and distorts and you can never save that audio. So I'm gonna turn up the microphone now so you can hear it. I'm just gonna solo it so it's what I'm listening to now. Now by default, it does have post-processing turned on. I'm gonna turn that off just so you can hear how it sounds as its natural state. So this is the Shure SM7B connected to the Rodecaster Pro 2, naturally with good mic placement, connected with all the tips and tricks that you've learned so far. Next, I'm going to turn on processing, and this is the default preset that comes with it, I believe. Yep. And now we can play with some of the other presets that are in here. There's neutral, so this is what the neutral preset sounds like. This is what the podcast studio preset sounds like. And this is what the broadcast preset sounds like. You will want to play with this for your voice. For me, I kind of like the way that the podcast studio one sounds like. It sounds compressed and dialed in. It has that big bottom end like at old AM radio, but it's not too far like the broadcast one. The broadcast one isn't too far. I think all of these are tastefully done, to be fair to Rode. But you will want to calibrate this per person. I think 95% of people, 98% of people, should just use these presets. When I look at other audio mixers in this category from Tascam and other companies, the thing that they do horribly is that they've made it too technical they reveal all the advanced features. If you go into advanced, there's a de-esser, there's a high pass filter, there's an EQ, there's a compressor, there's all kinds of things. I think Rode made some really nice sounding presets here that make it really easy to use. And you can really just pick one of the three that are out of the box. And I think you'll be happy with them. And you don't need to go into that advanced panel. Of course you can, that's an option. But I think 95% of people will be happy just shooting from the hip, picking one of these three depending how it sounds, and hitting record. Now, let's make sure that we're on Podcast Studio here. Let's go ahead and try the other windscreen here so you can see how it sounds. Okay, so this is how the bigger, more aggressive windscreen sounds on the Shure SM7B. For me, I've been liking this one more. I used to switch these back and forth about 50% of the time for each windscreen. This one is a little bit larger, which I dislike. But for me and my voice, it does kind of round out some of those higher frequencies. I do have a little bit of a lisp, and it prevents some of those. It's also more conservative from a point of view of pop protection and conserving a higher quality recording. Of course, it does sound just a little bit muffled compared to the previous one, this lighter weight one. And this lighter weight one obviously looks better on camera too. But lately, I've been really enjoying the warmth of this one although it can be just a little bit wooly and just a little bit too muffled uh, for some people's taste. So I do just want to put that out there as something to consider. Now, 
It really is as simple as that. Connect the microphone, scroll through, find the preset, and dial it in. In order to do other microphones, you just select the next channel and go down the line. The only other thing you really need for your podcast studio or recording or live stream, whatever you're using this for, is a high-quality set of headphones. I've been really enjoying the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pros. Rode just released a set of headphones that are paired with this. They sound great as well. And then there's the DT770 Pros, which are the closed ear version of these. Those are nice as well. So you do have some good options. I'm going to put some links down in the description below if you are looking for a nice set of headphones as well. It really is as easy as that. You just hit record after that once your SD card is in it, and you can be recording with the Shure SM7B and the Rodecaster Pro 2. If you have any questions about anything that we covered in this video, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs, we have links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.